Howdy folks. So it's Victoria Day here in Canada. It's a holiday and I uh, hope everyone's having a happy Monday. I'm not. I, uh, I got a notification email a couple days ago uh, from my file server saying that one of the disks had died. And uh, of course I was out visiting family over the long weekend so of course I wasn't here to check on it. So I just got back so I thought you know I should make this a priority so I've taken the panels off and uh, I've taken the disk out. So what actually happened was uh, I looked at the kernel log, it basically just told me that uh, the link froze, the SATA link froze, uh, the kernel tried to reset it, it failed, so it just dropped the disk. ZFS, of course, just says the disk is removed, and this is a RAID Z2 array, so losing a disk is not a big deal. So I've taken the disk out, and uh, I put the disk into a uh, into one of these little um, USB 3.0 caddies, and uh, I was expecting nothing to happen. However, I plugged it in, and the disk spun up, and the kernel detected it. Uh, no errors. So I thought that was good. Uh, I checked smart statistics. They looked all good. So I thought, hmm, did the disk crash? Uh, like the controller firmware? Or maybe there was some weird connection problem, something like that. So I took the disk, I put it back in the server, and it I basically I onlined it in ZFS, and ZFS started to resilver. And it resilvered for about 15 minutes. And then I got a whole bunch of IO sense errors, and then the kernel booted the disk again. So I thought, okay, maybe, maybe this is a thermal issue um, where something has to heat up before it fails. So what I did was I, I put it back in this caddy and uh, I started an extended self-test. And I believe that takes a couple hours on this, on this uh, particular drive. So it actually hasn't done that yet. So while it was doing that, I basically just started up uh, Disk Utility and I'm just using their built-in benchmark. It's just a read-only benchmark. Um, and it's just transferring gigabyte files uh, over and over and over again uh, from the disk. So it's been doing this for a while and uh, there have been no issues. So this leads me to believe that, well, I don't think the disk is the problem. I think the problem is with either the cable or the host bus adapter. And since the probability of a cable that's been perfectly fine all this time to just suddenly go bad um, is pretty low, it's pretty certain, I mean, I'm pretty certain that uh, the problem is the host bus adapter. And uh, I've had pretty good experiences with host bus adapters in the past, but uh, this one, uh, I haven't. Um, this is that, um, I don't remember the company that makes this, I'll have to check it when I take it out of the machine. But uh, this is just a two port uh, as media based controller. It's the one on top there. And the port that has probably failed is the one that's uh, furthest from the motherboard. And uh, anyway, that, that card, I originally bought one from my local computer store, and within a day, I had recognized that one of the ports had problems. It was giving me errors. Uh, it was working, but it was giving me errors. So I took it back, I exchanged it for this card, and this card's been perfectly fine up until this weekend. So it made it about a month and a half to two months or so in service. Um, so, of course, I'm not calling it 100% that that's the problem, but uh, my intuition and all the data I've gathered so far tells me that, yes, uh, that port has probably failed. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, something that I probably never wanted to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, of course, it's a holiday, so all the stores are closed. So I happen to have uh, this thing. This is that $6 uh, eBay special um, host bus adapter. It's the exact same as media 1061 chipset as the one that's in there. And uh, I did a video on this just to sort of showcase its quality. And I said it was it was a perfectly adequate card for you know everyday use, but I said I wouldn't put it in my file server because uh, you know I just kind of didn't want to I didn't want to do that. I wanted something a bit more reputable. But given the fact that the thing that I've got in there, which is supposedly from a reputable company, has obviously sucked ass, I thought I might as well try this because I mean I, there's nothing I can really lose at this point. Um, it's an N plus two redundant array, so even if the thing somehow shits two disks, it's not a terribly big deal. Plus, I've got, of course, got Darwin, Darwin, my backup server there, which has a full copy of everything that's on this. So I think I'll just throw this in. This one works fine. I've already tested it. So I'll throw this in there, um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, it'll obviously resilver that disk. And um, yeah, I, I'm going to probably do some more testing on that card once it's out of this machine, just to see, uh, see maybe if I can narrow down the problem. I'll take a look under the microscope, see if there's any scorch marks or anything onto the chips or whatever. Probably not. If the, if the thing still functions uh, to this extent, there's probably something internal to the chip that's failed or maybe a, a, a passive component around the chip has failed or a solder joint has failed, something like that. Maybe I'll try and find that. 
uh, maybe I'll try and reflow it because uh, I bought a reflow station uh, relatively recently, so I may I may just try it for the shits and giggles because at this point I'm not going to deal with the returns on that card because it's outside of the computer store's warranty and I'm not going to bother to RMA that thing. It was only like 25 bucks. So anyway, so yeah, um, I have not had a, a single error uh, on this disc running these tests. So, I mean, I've transferred quite a bit of data from it and uh, no issues. So I am betting pretty much 100% that that host bus adapter has shit itself. So uh, I'll come back once I've uh, once the smart test has finished. Um, I'm running the smart test at the same time, although you don't really get any real data from it until it's done, so I have no idea when that'll be. But I will wait till the extended test is done before I, I uh, make any conclusions, but yeah. I I I I think it's uh, I think it's another case of bad quality control on the uh, the part of the host bus controller uh, manufacturer. So the benchmarks completed, and so did the sm uh, smart self test, and they all came back fine. So I shut down Tesla, and I took out the uh, host bus adapter. So I've got this one here, and uh, of course the cables wouldn't reach because nothing nothing is easy in my life. Um, this one, of course, has the cables on uh, the end, whereas the other one has it on the side, so uh, those red cables wouldn't reach up there, so I had to flip two of my host bus adapters uh, around to make all the cables fit, and they just barely fit within its new location, but uh, there it is at the bottom now. It's in an X16 slot, but who cares? So, um, yeah, and uh, the system I uh, came up, and it automatically onlined that disk, of course, and uh, it immediately began to resilver. It finished the resilver very quickly. And uh, I'm basically just running a manual scrub. And uh, it's working uh, perfectly fine. Uh, I'm getting all the speeds I normally get. And uh, it's had no issues. So, uh, of course, it's been going on for quite a while now. So, yeah, there, there's uh, pretty much, uh, it's 100% confirmed. It is this thing uh, that has failed. And it's uh, this port particularly right here. So uh, I'm going to uh, take a look at this under the microscope, see what I can see. I got my tweezers out and I uh, just wanted to see if there was a loose connection on these, on these uh, SATA ports and that doesn't appear to be it. But if you look at these, if my camera will do a macro focus on this, I'm not sure. If you look at the actual solder joints on those connectors, they look very, very wrong. Um, you can see that, that a couple of the pins have the right amount of solder, and the other ones look like they barely got any solder, if, if that, on them. Now, they are, they are attached, but, um, yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of not great. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to go over this in a microscope, probably just reflow it because, I mean, who cares, might as well, uh, and just see what happens. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I guess this is sort of the classic example of you know, paying more for something does not necessarily mean it's going to be of better quality. Um, so this will be a real test for that HPA. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that I do, don't have to deal with um, Seagate's uh, RMA where I ship the drive away and wait, I don't know how many weeks before they get it back to me. But because um, I don't want to have to buy another drive. Uh, and then just, you know, when I get the one from RMA, I just having it, have it sitting there. I don't want that. So I'm glad that the disc uh, was not the problem. Um, because the of course the disc is 170 bucks and uh, this thing is 25 so eh, I lost a bit of money but I guess that's what you get for dealing with these cheap cheap HBAs and I know I know what some some people are gonna say why don't you just buy a proper server grade card and you know the the answer is I really don't have much of an excuse I should buy one um, and probably the next time something bad happens, I'll probably do that. But I'm not going to do it now because, I mean, I just had that card laying around and I don't want to have to deal with going on eBay, finding a card, making sure that it works because, of course, you never know what you're going to get that's used and all that stuff. So I couldn't be bothered at the moment. But, yeah, it's something that's definitely on my list of to-do. But uh, uh, for now, this is good enough. So I've got the microscope out. And uh, what you're looking at are the pins of the uh, the connector uh, for the port that's failed. And um, the reason I'm just looking at this is just to sort of show you uh, sort of the variance in the soldering on this board. It's kind of all over the place. Like, for example, these two pins on the, on this side, uh, they have, uh, they're, they're ugly as shit, but they look, they look fine. Um, that's kind of what I would expect them to look like. But these 
pins have sub substantially less solder on them. And you could say that this is a, an adequate amount. Um, and it looks like there's a lot more there under the microscope than there really is uh, when you look at this under a magnifying glass or under the naked eye. But uh, these almost look like they were reworked by hand. Um, that's kind of why they look all cruddy. And if you look at the other one, um, again, we've got sort of just random ones that have more solder than the rest. And of course, this would all be applied using a stencil. So you would expect them to be the same. So my theory here is that probably uh, these three pins were reworked by hand and these two pins were reworked by hand um, during the, I guess, the quality control, which doesn't really speak so well for this product. But I've gotten my tweezers out and all of these, all of these pins are, uh, they are solid, like they aren't, they aren't loose or anything. So um, I don't, I don't think there's any problems with these, uh, these solder joints. I'll, I'll say that for sure. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're perfectly fine. I don't see a problem with any of these. Um, and then kind of sort of tracing through the signal path, of course, we've got some some small surface mount caps here. And again, uh, I don't see any problems with these. Uh, they look fine. Um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna bother to like do component level measurements and stuff like that. That's not, that's not a big deal. They all look fine. And um, yeah, really, um, I, there's not much that I can see that's obviously wrong on this. I mean, all the, the joints here look fine. Although if there is truly a hairline fracture, um, you're not going to see it just by doing this kind of analysis anyway. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is the thing, and I'll I'll make I'll make sure I mention this. Um, just because I mentioned that you know there you know there could be a problem with the solder joints does not mean that solder joints um, are always the problem, and it doesn't mean that you can just you know just reflow it and it'll work again. I know there's a lot of people who think, oh, my graphics card died, I should put it in an oven and then it'll work again. That is absolutely complete BS. Um, if, if that was the case, then uh, everyone would be doing it. Uh, and also, by the way, never put your graphics card in an oven. That's a terrible idea because it's never, almost never the solder balls. That's actually what's wrong. Um, it's usually an internal failure inside the chip um, and heating it just sort of delays the inevitable failure. Um, and, and that's if you do it right. If you do it wrong, you'll just kill the, kill the board entirely. So what I'm going to do with this, because I have nothing to lose and it's not worth very much, I will just go over this with my hot air station um, and throw it in a test PC just to see what happens. Um, because, I mean, it's possible. The fact that it works for a few minutes and then fails um, tells me that it's, it could be. It could be a thermal thing um, to do with a, a joint. But it's most likely there's something on the chip uh, that has failed. Uh, maybe a bond wire inside the chip or um, something else. But uh, just for the sake of doing this, I might as well give it a go. But yeah, this, this particular card, um, it appears to be a G536PCE1061 V11 um, IO PCE, 10, the 1061 is for the Asmedia 1061 version 1.1. And um, the part number is SYPEX four thousand four zero zero three nine. So, um, yeah, whatever whatever company makes this, this this may be a Cyba or an IO Crest or something like that. Um, yeah, I've I've had two of these in a row go bad on me. So, I would probably stay away from these things uh, if at all possible. So. I'll reflow it, and if that does anything, I'll maybe make a separate short video about it, but I think that's the last you're gonna see of this. So anyway, hopefully this was uh, interesting. Thanks for watching.